Hey everyone, Paul Daniels here. We've got ourselves a uh, <coughs> M1 MacBook. Unknown fault. Just turned up. And we'll have to uh, first find out what the fault is, and then secondly, hopefully try to fix it. So let's jump in, see what we can do. We have here the data flex that goes from the audio board. I am unsure as to why it has been separated. We've got a little tiny burn mark there. Yeah. All right, let's, let's plug this in and see what we get in terms of power. So, blip, 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 couple of, yeah, okay, we, we've got some spiking going on there. But we are getting 20 volts, or at least I thought we did for a second. Oh, wait, no, that's 5 volts. All right, all right, let's take this board out and have a look. Those blips are big enough and long enough that, yeah, you know what, I'm not 100% sure. Usually, if you have... Now, yeah, that screw is lifting. Let's just get the board out and have a look. See if we can see anything visually. Nothing jumping out. We'll try the microscope. My first thought is we are going to be looking for a capacitor that's cracked or blown. Not exactly sure where it's going to be though. I don't think it's going to be around the PMIC. Because usually if the PMIC ones are down then we don't typically see the spike. We just see a, more of a constant current, 450. Actually come to think of it, that is 450. Okay, looking at the voltages, now that we can see it is actually five, uh, 450 milliamps, stuck at 5 volts, I'm thinking it might be the PMIC. Unfortunately, to see the PMIC, we've got to remove this. What I'm going to do first, before I remove this top cover, I'm going to see if it actually is somewhere else like maybe it is just somewhere on the board that I can get access to without removing the heat sink assembly. If we can't see anything then we will remove the heat sink assembly. Alright, nothing glaringly obvious. Right, back under the microscope, whoa, we have an inductor that's been replaced there, I'm almost 100% certain, and that is a common one too. I know, I've encountered this myself in the past. We're going to take an angled view and see if we can see any cracked caps. Honestly, can't tell if that's original or replaced. It's got a crack through it. It's got solder around it. It looks like it's been moved. Rather uncertain. Check our short to ground on that. Well, the inductor itself has basically cooked itself to the point where it's 185 ohms. That's uh, a little high for that filter. That should be closer to a 1 or 2. We'll just get a donor board and have a look. The thing I'm worried about is if I replace this filter, and these are rather unique filters, I haven't really found a suitable replacement anywhere else. <clears throat> I have a feeling that it could well and truly burn up as well, like the original. So there's our, what it should look like. We should get a continuity beep. Yep. Yeah. I'm just going to remove that filter. Those pads look pretty bad. Uh, they've been burned up. 
Okay, check continuity mode. 700, 700. Hmm, everything seems reasonable there too. That's really frustrating. Okay, what's going on down here? We've got a short. Alright, I get a feeling that's not supposed to be there. Let's compare it to the other one. Yeah, that's a big difference. Trouble is, we actually have no idea where that's coming from. Because we do not appear to have that on the board view. Okay, so on this board we have pulled the PMIC off. And unfortunately, that looks like it just goes to one ball. But at least we know which ball it is. It is the sixth ball. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can see we've got a bunch of caps on the other side. We'll have a look. So we have... This one here, then we have this one here, and then there and there. Let's see if we can see any cracks in any of them. Oh yes, there we have it. That is one cracked up cap. Interestingly, that was on a slightly different rail. So if we look here, this is the pin that shorted. And it appears as though it's only going to these caps here. But if we bring in the schematic, Okay, so they're the caps that we've been looking at. Now, if we search again, we find this here. And it is connected via a link into this rail here. And if we search that rail, then suddenly we reveal more caps that are effectively on the same electrical connection. And this one here, 7801, looks to be the one that's cracked. Now the trouble is, is that too much damage and we've destroyed the PMU or you know, what are we dealing with? And from above like that, you would not detect a slightly different colour but not enough to be notably different. As soon as you tilt it up like that, you can see it. Even from back here, you can definitely see there's a crack on there. So we'll get that off and put a new filter on and see what happens. Let's see what the state of the network line there is now. Okay, we're showing open, which is certainly a lot better than shorted. Now we have to try and... I don't know if this PMIC has survived though. We need to try and see if we can get those pads to come back to life. I have a feeling they're not going to, but we'll try. What we may have to end up doing is replacing the PMIC, repairing the traces, yeah, it's getting borderline. Yeah, that pad just doesn't want to be there anymore. It's like I had a hard life, leave me alone. Alright, now we're going to do a filter transfer. going to leave it like that. We'll push our luck too far today. I think I'll put that cap back on, or a replacement rather, because that is a 20 microfarad, 10, uh, yeah, 20 microfarad 10 volt, classic sort of Apple one. And the reason why I want to put it back on is because it is actually forming a fairly 
substantial amount of the decoupling for that rail. But basically it's got just the other 20 as well and that's it. So that's losing 50% of its decoupling. You probably don't really want that. You want, you know, I don't like to lose more than two or three percent at the most. 50% is a bit much. So we're actually going to put a 22 back on. For some reason the Apple ones are listed as 20 but the ones you can get commercially are 22. And to be fair the 22s didn't appear until quite a bit of time after Apple bought out theirs. It's just a bit of old flux there from the solder I kind of want to remove that. Personally I feel like there's too much solder on those pads but I really don't want to stuff around with it too much. This is one of those cases where you simply want to getting the machine up and running is the primary priority. Okay. So there will be a little bit of solder float, a little bit of bulging coming out the sides, but in terms of risks, it's not a big problem. Okay, safely down. I'm thinking that's cooled off enough now. So here we go, fingers crossed. We got our 20 volts looking good there. This might actually be repaired. Let's put it back together, see how we go. Here we go. Got a win. Alright, that's excellent. Another one fixed. I think this job reinforced for me the fact that don't go pulling big chips unless you've eliminated all the other options. It doesn't matter how tempting it might be, don't go pulling the big chips unless you really, really have to. Like we could have easily pulled up that PMIC and it would have been to absolutely no avail and we would have reduced the chance of success overall because we've added another element of difficulty and uh, we've tainted the board, we've tainted the situation. The next one is of course that just because the board view shows maybe four or five capacitors on the network doesn't mean that is the only ones that are on the network. You've got to look out for the situations where in the schematic that network gets bridged into another network either through a internal wire jumper or a zero ohm resistor or some other low ohm resistance. So it's worth checking those things as well. That's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, very happy that of course we managed to get that fixed. It was also interesting I forgot to mention that looking at the capacitor directly overhead did not reveal that it was broken but looking at it from an angle is what showed it up for having the fault that it had. Always look at your boards at a bit of an angle, turn it around, take your time. I know I don't do that enough. I tend to rush a lot and it's easy to miss these things but it was very clear in this video how different the capacitor looked when you had it overhead versus at an angle. All right, that's everything for me today. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, you'll take care. I'll catch you later.